So as already mentioned, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a couple of my favorite topics, so Terraform and AWS Control Tower. And I would first like to start with a kind of a short story. So uh, maybe a year, year and a half ago, uh, we worked with a client that you know they had uh, quite an extensive infrastructure. They run a couple of hundreds of accounts. And obviously, to kind of officially provision that, they were using AWS Control Tower. Um, I'll get into the details what it is later. Uh, but just to kind of give you the background, uh, they're running, you know, uh, they actually wanted to migrate to AWS Control Tower. They're running their infrastructure in uh, GCP. And uh, they came to us saying, sure, can you help us with the migration? We said, of course, absolutely. We are um, consultancy, right? Uh, so because they're a Terraform shop, uh, we said, sure, you know, uh, you want to use Control Tower, uh, you're using Terraform. So naturally, you would think, sure, uh, we can definitely help you with that. Uh, it should be a piece of cake, right? We have uh, AWS, uh, AWS provider for that. And even up to this day, if you look up the documentation for the AWS provider and uh, write in the Control Tower, uh, you cannot find a single resource for that. So. Uh, uh, so that went immediately <laughs> out of the window for us, right? So it kind of posed the question for ourselves, like, you know, is you know, uh, Terraform the right tool for the job here? Or do we need to use something else? Or do we need to resort to, you know, God forbid, uh, uh, CloudFormation, right? <laughs> uh, oh, in all seriousness, we have to admit that the, the good thing about CloudFormation, it actually uh, was the reason why Mitchell came up with uh, Terraform, right? So uh, that's good. So uh, quickly about myself, uh, my name is Marco Bautz, as already mentioned. Uh, I'm a head of consultancy at the Scale Factory. We are a remote-first uh, AWS consultancy based in London, uh, but we are a remote-first company, so we are based all around Europe. Uh, my background is mostly ops. Uh, I did some development in my previous life, but uh, I'm not worth mentioning, I guess, compared to many of you. Uh, I'm also an open source contributor, uh, maintainer, and a supporter. Uh, I'm also one of the HashiCorp ambassadors. Uh, and you know, when I'm not doing that, I'm a big fan of you know, traveling, which I can do more now, uh, hiking and cycling. So enough about me. Uh, first of all, before we dive into the control tower piece, uh, can I quickly get a raise of hands who has used control tower or at least heard of it? OK, we have some hands. All right, at least half people. Uh, or at least uh, if, <coughs> let's try to explain it to, to the other half then. So first of all, what the control tower is, right? So it all started in June 2018. Uh, it, back then, it was called differently. It was called a landing zone, uh, because this is how it is. Uh, and then Rene, they kind of transformed into the AWS control tower product later on. They still called part of the control tower a landing zone. Uh, what is it? It's a well-architected AWS account management. Uh, when I say management, I mean it offers you a stream, streamlined workflow for kind of vending out your accounts, keeping them um, aligned with the AWS uh, affected kind of practices, and it offers centralized uh, guard, um, sorry, governance and uh, guardrails with controls that you can centrally manage in, let's say, in an easy way, right? Uh, what does it consist of? So under the hood, it's using some of the AWS services. So it's not a completely new service. It's using some of the AWS services under the hood, so such as AWS organizations, uh, catalog, cloud formation, uh, ooh, cloud formation, right? Uh, AWS Config, cloud trail, uh, et cetera. Uh, it comes with AWS SSO built in uh, uh, and with a secure uh, consolidated billing built in. So you get it out of the box. Uh, it is kind of an you know, um, opinionated AWS way how you should provision your accounts. But nevertheless, it still does uh, offer a certain level of customizability. And like I said before, it comes with a nice kind of a dashboard which shows you all your estate in one place. And it's, like I said, easy to use. I'm really uh, trying to use that word lightly here. Uh, so uh, a part of that, it's a really good tool to use when you need to be compliant or you need to kind of ensure that you have data residency in specific regions or you want to prevent using other regions that are either not allowed or you don't want to data to be stored there. Uh, and when you roll it out, you literally end up with something like that. Uh, it's uh, one of the possible blueprints. So you would end up with a management account with a uh, uh, with couple of services deployed there. Uh, obviously, uh, you can change some of that. 
uh, some of it, it's very opinionated and hard-coded. Uh, what you will literally end up with is the security OU, uh, where there is lock, archive, and audit accounts, and then the uh, rest of it is really up to you. So th that's the only bit that's kind of predefined. Everything else, else is up to you. Uh, what I'm showing here is one of the possible blueprints and um, kind of best practices uh, based on AWS documents as well. Uh, so, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, if using AWS Control Tower, obviously you want to automate it. Uh, we hear all about automation. And uh, first thing that you notice, like I showed you before in the documentation, there are no resources in Terraform. And the reason for that is uh, there are literally no public endpoints, API endpoints for the Control Tower. So you either end up manually provisioning the things uh, in a click swap way, uh, which we all probably agree it's not the best way approaching that. And um, actually, AWS came up with a solution of their own, including a lot of cloud formation in May 21. It's called uh, Customizations for AWS Control Tower, uh, and it's kind of a GitOps-driven uh, pipelines to provision your accounts using a lot of cloud formation. But if you use Terraform in your estate, right, uh, how do you manage your infrastructure? Like, do you want to resort and use cloud formation? Probably not, right? So uh, what can you actually do is either you target underlying AWS services directly. So there are endpoints for AWS organizations, catalog, et cetera. So you can actually use Terraform to kind of do that directly without the kind of the centralized endpoint. Uh, or you can use a third party Terraform provider, such as um, Control Tower uh, from IDEO. Uh, and what they're doing under the hood is literally what I said. Uh, they're just targeting specific endpoints for uh, services that Control Tower manages for you. Uh, but I'm actually not here to talk about any of those. Uh, I'm actually here to talk about the AWS Control Tower uh, account factory for Terraform. So uh, that was released in November 21. Uh, uh, accidentally, it coincides with the last reInvent. Uh, God knows why. And uh, let's have a look what that is. So AWS uh, account factory for Terraform is a Terraform uh, module managed by AWS Control Tower team uh, and with a joint effort from HashiCorp. So it was jointly developed and published as an open source module, uh, like I mentioned in November 21. It knows how to provision and customize your AWS accounts uh, through Terraform using kind of a uh, GitOps-driven automation, uh, aka pipelines. Um, so uh, you can store your source configuration in anything that's supported by AWS CodeStar. So that can be either AWS CodeCommit, uh, uh, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise, or Bitbucket. Uh, and luckily, it doesn't overlap with other pipelines that you might have, such as uh, CFCT uh, or anything else that you might be using to deploy your workloads. Uh, if you want to run that, there are a couple of prerequisites for that. So uh, first of all, quite uh, sensible, right? You have to have Control Tower deployed. Makes sense. Uh, second of all, uh, they are quite opinionated, and they assume that you have AFT uh, deployed in a separate account and a separate OU. And you need to have administrator access policy user uh, that have permission to kind of load that. And currently, supported execution environments are actually three. So either you go with Terraform Open Source, uh, Terraform uh, Cloud, or Terraform Enterprise. Uh, obviously, you have to use Terraform uh, O15 or newer, uh, which kind of seems old now anyway. Uh, and process of using that is kind of twofold. So you have the bootstrapping part of it, and then you have the deployments that you do uh, when you vend out, your, vend out your new accounts. Right, so let's have a look at some code. Uh, I'm not as uh, brave as, I my, as my predecessors, so unfortunately, no live demo here. Uh, I usually do that, but this time around, because we're short on time, we're just going to go for some um, code. So how do you actually do that? If we have a look first uh, back behind, my, uh, behind me on the screen, uh, it, like I said, it's an upstream module. Uh, you can just directly re reference it from the GitHub repo. Uh, I'm not sure if it's already published in registry. I uh, need to double check on that. But what it actually takes as an input is literally just a couple of uh, account, uh, account numbers and regions where you're storing your control tower management account, where you're targeting your audit, our high log accounts, and stuff like that. And uh, as an optional feature flags, you can provide different things, such as um, if you want to delete the default VPC and roll it out with your own VPC modules, or you're managing it elsewhere. 
uh, if you want to kind of enable CloudTrail, which normally you want, and a couple of other bits as well. As part of that, you need to specify a couple of Git repos there as well within your Git organization. And uh, we're going to look into that more into more detail uh, in the next couple of minutes. So as soon as you run that piece of Terraform code that you see behind me, what you actually end up with is something like that, right? Uh, it might seem very uh, kind of involved, but it's actually not that bad. So what you end up with is a couple of AWS code pipelines. So um, the first one that you see on your uh, left here is the pipeline uh, that takes on the account requests and uh, deploys and bends out your new AWS accounts as you put in your as you commit new code in. And the second one on the right is another pipeline that takes care of, and it's actually automatically triggered uh, uh, from your Git repos as well. Uh, and it takes care of any kind of customizations that you want to do in your accounts. Specifically, if you want to kind of uh, take care of any kind of compliance or uh, security uh, customizations, you can actually do that through Git repos as well using Terraform code in you know usual way as you would be used to doing it. So. And uh, kind of the bottom bit is literally the control tower management account that you obviously need to have access to, so you can actually target um, the control tower services and vend out accounts uh, and uh, ensure that uh, rest of the rest of the things is uh, kind of triggered. Right. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, after you deploy it out, what you end up with is four uh, Git repos, as you can see here. Let's quickly have a look uh, what those repos are for. So the first one is AFT Global Customizations, uh, which kind of take care of customizing kind of global settings for all your provisioned AWS accounts. It can either be Terraform or Python. Uh, and uh, you can easily satisfy your kind of uh, security or any kind of auditing compliance with that on a global level without going into detail. And then the second one is AFT Account Customizations. So it actually does what it says on the tin. Uh, it customizes your accounts, specific, specific accounts. And how it does that, it actually does it by kind of applying things based on the account customization's name parameter in the AFT account request uh, repository. We'll get to that in a bit. The third one is AFT account provisioning customizations. Um, that one is a little bit more nebulous. Uh, and what it actually does is it enables you to kind of hook up into the AWS step functions to kind of customize the rest of your infrastructure that might not fit in your Terraform code. So you can actually use AWS step functions to integrate with lambdas or anything else that you might run as part of your account banding process. Um, and the last one is AWS uh, account requests. And this is where you kind of drop your uh, Terraform pieces of code to kind of uh, trigger the account request vending um, uh, pipelines. Uh, if you want to get started with that, uh, there is uh, sources slash AWS customizations repos uh, uh, kind of a, a start example repo in the uh, AFT repo uh, directory. So you can go there and kind of look for most common use cases uh, to get you started with AWS, uh, not AWS, AFT, sorry. <laughs> it's a joint project. So uh, let's quickly have a look uh, how to vend out the new account before we kind of wrap it up. So uh, if you want to vend out the new account, like I said, it's as easy as just dropping a piece of Terraform in your um, AFT requests uh, repository. Uh, it's, again, upstream module that you deploy. Uh, you specify control tower parameters as you would usually do if you manually provision that. So you specify things about uh, details about account and SSO. And then there are a couple of uh, change ma management parameters that you can also use to kind of easily track your changes. If you're working in a regulated industry, that might come handy as well. You're just adding a couple of metadata to the uh, pipelines, uh, which you can actually kind of go back and look at. You can also use custom fields or um, accounts customization names um, to kind of easily track what you deploy. Uh, and let's quickly wrap it up. Uh, unfortunately, we're kind of running uh, on to time. So to kind of wrap it up, uh, as we learned today, uh, there are a few ways how you can manage your AWS control tower. Uh, some of them are um, ISE controls, some of them are not. Uh, today, we specifically dive into detail about the AFT. 
Key advantages of using AFT are obviously using uh, HCL version 2, which we are all familiar with, so you can avoid kind of either learning cloud formation or writing any uh, customized bash scripts. It offers you a automated GitOps approach uh, with uh, GitOps-driven and performing workflows. Uh, when I say performing, it means it wouldn't add any kind of performance impact on your uh, speed of velocity when you deploy accounts out. Uh, it's fully integrated into both ecosystems, so uh, that means HashiCorp and AWS, and it's supported from both sides as well, so you can ask for support from both parties. Uh, it comes with security built in uh, and aligned with all world architecture practices, so kind of takes all the boxes uh, if you if you work in a highly regulated industry as well. Uh, there are a couple of downsides as well. Uh, it's a fairly new product, so uh, my Personal opinion is the feedback loop is a bit longer, so it doesn't offer the same feedback loops as you will be used from uh, products such as Terraform Cloud. So it's not that kind of well integrated in your uh, Git repository, so you don't get this kind of an initial feedback if something fails. Uh, and it might be a little bit different approach that, for example, you've already been using. So uh, it's uh, it's obviously an opinion to wait how to how to deal with that. Um, there are more moving parts, so um, the kind of uh, feel to it is less sassy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the main reason why we need to work around that is, at this point, AWS Control Tower doesn't offer um, parallelism. So when you bend out new accounts, you need to have SQSs, SNSs, and everything deployed in order to kind of handle and work around this uh, shortcoming from AWS Control Tower at this point, and uh, hopefully that's uh, going to be solved in the future. And removing resources, of course, is always hard, right? So if you want to remove resources, unfortunately, it's not as easy as just remove your Terraform code. Uh, you actually have to go and clean up uh, a lot of resources on your own, for example, like pipelines, uh, DynamoDB, DynamoDB tables, and things like that. Uh, quickly about the price. Uh, if you ask AWS, uh, they would say it's free. Uh, but uh, in order to run all the infrastructure that we've seen before, uh, it costs around $300 per month for just running the basic pipelines, so that might be something worth keeping in your mind as if you decide to kind of onboard with that. But nevertheless, I think it's the most comprehensive solution that offers IIC experience if you're trying to vet out your accounts using AWS Control Tower. Uh, and that would be all for myself. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be around. If you have any questions, just find me around. I'll be around here tomorrow as well, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you.